Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of Know Thy User. Know Thy User is a podcast by Rival Mind. <laughs> are we not are we? supposed to look at we're not supposed to look at each other? I don't know. Where we talk about all things digital marketing. Uh, today with Harley Helmer, he's a, a, a resident expert in search engine optimization. Um, I am a resident expert in nothing. Uh, we're going to be talking about five things to consider before investing in SEO. So I know that we spent a little bit of time w talking this through, yeah. but let's just start right in with number one. Five things to consider before investing in SEO. First one, is your current website really the one you want to invest marketing dollars in? What? Yeah, so we oftentimes will talk to prospects and say, you know, if, if we were to direct a thousand visitors a month to this website, mm -hmm. is this really the one that you would be happy with visitors seeing? Are you happy with that first? Yep. Secondly would be, and it's, this is more pointed, if we were to send a thousand visitors a month to that website, are those thousand visitors going to know what to do with your website? Are they going to become customers or at least a hot lead for you? Yeah, is the website built to lead your visitors down the path towards conversion? Right. And conversion is basically just, what is your marketing goal? Do you want someone to contact you? Do you want something to purchase something? Right, absolutely, yeah. So if your website, if you're not super happy with the way your website is, uh, and secondarily, you're not sure if the website is going to actually convert the visitors that it earns after investing some serious SEO dollars, you should consider hitting the brakes, taking some money out to rebuild your website with SEO and conversion in mind first. Excellent, all right. Point number two, five things to consider before investing in SEO. Spend time creating attainable specific goals to help measure your success. What say you, Harley Helmer? Yeah, so going into battle without a plan is always a bad idea, and it's no different with SEO. Um, creating a budget for SEO and executing SEO without measurable goals in mind um, is going to hinder your ability to execute the SEO strategy well because you're not going to be able to measure your success against the goals that you've created. Um, if your only goal in SEO is to get more revenue and grow your business, you need to pump the brakes. Um, pump the brakes. We often at Rival Mind will give our clients three different types of goals or um, results before revenue dollars start to come in. The first one is increased Google rankings. You were ranking for this specific phrase, number 20, and after some work, now you're ranking fourth. You weren't ranking, or you weren't ranking at all for this keyword, and now you're ranking 15th. So we're measuring the delta, mm -hmm. um, and you should measure the delta on you know a monthly basis. Yep. Uh, where where were you, and where are you going? Um, and then what is the click through as a result of that? Right, and that's oftentimes the first step in a positive SEO strategy is keyword growth. The second one is increased website traffic. Yep. Uh, are more people coming to your website from Google or other search engines as a result of the increased traffic or yep. increased rankings? And then lastly, uh, and this harkens back to the first point, are the new visitors becoming leads or becoming customers as a result of the increased rankings, increased traffic, increased engagement is the third one that we'll often uh, explain or show to our clients uh, before they start to see a revenue growth simply so that they can understand that there is value, we're on the right track, mm -hmm. the trajectory is good. And then the very last step is engagement leads to revenue. Very good. Five things to consider before investing in SEO. Number three, who is executing your SEO strategy? Yeah, so there's three kind of main options in our mind. One, do it yourself, totally legitimate. Uh, you just have to evaluate the opportunity cost. Is it, is it going to make you more money to spend time learning SEO and executing it yourself, or yeah. for you to outsource it, find someone else to do it so you can focus on your business? Um, the second option is to hire someone to become your in-house SEO. Mm -hmm. um, this is oftentimes the most expensive option simply because you're going to have to pay someone really well to yeah. do really good work. Um, really experienced SEOs are in the upper five digits for salary. Um, so that's just something to consider. Uh, and then the well, last and, one. And to consider along those lines too, is do they really know what, they, right. what they're doing? Yep. Because we oftentimes even here will get 
people in that uh, for an SEO position and end up having to retrain them completely. So yeah. um, there's a little bit of that too. Yep. And then the last one is hire outside. Find a vendor, find uh, a, someone who knows SEO really well, find an agency, in my opinion, is the best, uh, the best way to get the best bang for your buck. Uh, this happens at Rival Mind all the time. We're an agency, we bring on a new client, and oftentimes we have interdepartmental uh, discussions, strategy, whatnot, so our clients are paying, you know, whatever their monthly balance is, but they're really getting a whole team of people. You know, our SEOs talk to our web developers about things on the right. website. Our SEOs talk to the designers. Our SEOs talk to social media people. Um, so they're getting a whole broad range yep. of strategists. They're getting a whole broad range of ideas. Writers that are specific professional content writers, things right. like that. You know, the word I often use, the 90s word uh, I get made fun of constantly for is synergy. Yeah. It's it's all these teams working together and, and you get that rather than one guy that you hope knows what they're doing or yep. gal for that matter. Absolutely. All right. So, and just to um, belabor that point to its very end, <laughs> for me, especially, you know, in an upper management position, um, it's about opportunity cost. Do you have time to do the all the things that, um, it takes, uh, you know, it's not rocket science, but do you have time to learn and to do all the things yep. that it takes uh, to influence Google? Yep. Okay, and then uh, who is your target market? Yeah, so taking some time to really think about your target market, who are the people that you want to find your website? More, more in depth is who is your ideal client? If you can come up with three or four ideal clients or customers even yeah. um, that you can get inside their mind before you either outsource, hire in or do it yourself will give you a much more strong track to advance down uh, when you begin your strategy and trying to figure out what phrases to rank for, doing your keyword research, content writing, all of that. Right. If you can get inside the mind of who you want to be interacting with your business, um, you'll be much more successful. Yeah, that's really important. Mm -hmm. Especially in the keyword uh, research phase of it, you might think, hey, there's 10, 10 different phrases I think uh, my customers are using to find my products and services. And in fact, uh, you might even be going after the wrong persona and there might be a thousand additional, you know, keyword phrase combinations that you're not even considering because you're targeting too broadly um, or too, too narrowly or just the wrong person in general. Yeah, one of the first things we always ask our clients is, what are, what are the most frequently asked questions you get by your customers? Um, because if your customers are asking you those questions, it's guaranteed that other people are asking those questions. And if those other people are asking the same questions, they very well may be a, a great fit as a potential customer. So yeah. start by analyzing what are some questions that uh, your customers are asking you and um, how you would answer those and maybe what other avenues you could pursue as far as questions from your customers. That's a great place to start. Yeah, very good. Okay, so number five, the last point in this uh, quick podcast, uh, probably my favorite. I like how you wrote this. <laughs> Do you have the stomach for delayed gratification? Yes. So why don't you talk a little bit about why you wrote it that way and what the answer to that is? Yeah. So um, Americans specifically, instant <laughs> gratification. We got to have everything now. Cue the music. Yep. Cue the music. Uh, and we got to have everything now. We got to we got to make moves. We got to make it happen. SEO is not that. SEO. We talk about this in other episodes. We talk about it internally all the time. SEO is a ongoing monthly cumulative strategy. So the longer you execute an SEO strategy, the more you execute, the better your results. Um, and so we often at Rival Mind talk to our clients about a six to 12 month yeah. wait before they really start to see keywords really moving, traffic really increasing, engagement finally coming in. And sometimes there can even be an additional wait for really the revenue turnaround. Mm -hmm. So if you're not prepared to buckle up and wait for the results to come in and be testing and troubleshooting your strategy along the way, uh, SEO is not the right, um, well, I would strategy for you. I would say it is the right strategy. You just don't know it. Well, yeah, that, that's definitely, definitely right. That's definitely right. So the one of the words that you used at the very beginning was investment. Mm -hmm. And I think that's key. 
uh, here. This SEO is an investment. And so if you're willing to invest, it's kind of like the stock market. Uh, Maybe that's not the best analogy. <laughs> There's less risk, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but over time, you're going to start to see results. And then at some point, and we often see from six months to 12 months, but even I, I can think of some specific companies at 12 months, the, the curve just went straight up. Yeah. And it's because Google's trying to figure you out. Are you legit or not? Right. And Go so you have to be willing to take the time to you know, build the content and all the things that are going into the strategy for Google to respond. Yeah, we communicate this to prospective clients in the very beginning. Google is a giant machine. Mm -hmm. It's the biggest in the world. Um, and they have their own mission. Their mission is to give website visitors, their website visitors, the best possible results for their questions. Um, and if Google doesn't believe, or based on its algorithm, if Google doesn't believe that your website is the best possible result, you're simply not going to exist there. So using SEO to build trust with Google long-term uh, is what's going to get you there. And it's a long-term long strategy. Excellent. For those of you who are listening in your car right now, well, you're in luck because we didn't show anything on the screen except our shiny faces. Uh, so don't feel like you need to come back and watch this to see anything on the screen. So that's great for you. Uh, I think a great way to end this, Harley, is in 10 seconds, can you recap the five things to consider before investing in SEO? Go. Yeah, so the first one is, do you want a new website before you start? There are a couple things that we talked about um, with website performance and investing in SEO. The second one is spend time creating attainable goals. If revenue is your only goal, you need to pump the brakes. Three, who's executing your SEO? Is it internal? Is it external? Are you going to hire someone internal? Four, who's your target market? Knowing who your prospective clients will be is gonna help you execute your strategy long-term. Uh, and then the last one is, do you have the iron stomach for waiting <laughs> out the SEO results long term. You did it. Yes. Well, I don't know if it was 10 seconds. It definitely it was, wasn't 10 it was seconds. Pretty stinking fast. <laughs> so some of you might be thinking, man, I just wasted 10 minutes of time and I could have just watched the end. Yeah. I hope that's not the case. If you found that this is helpful to you, uh, maybe it would be helpful to someone else. So we just ask that you would share this podcast with friends, colleagues, your sister, your pets. Yep, and if you want a specific topic discussed by someone on the team, add us on Twitter at KnowThyUser. We'll uh, take your comments under advisement and maybe you'll see it show up in a podcast episode. Yeah, so thank you for watching. <laughs>